So um, I'll start with what I have done for this week, and I'll um, share my screen. takes a bit to see what I'm supposed to share. <laughs> um, so I have, like, I have Jenkins running right now. And these were jobs which, um, like, I created just, like, test jobs. So right now what's uh you know for the the things what it's doing this is basically like jenkins as a source so we figured that we'd start working with jenkins as a source first and then once we have a bit of like more clear idea of getting events and stuff we can move into uh configuring jenkins as a sync uh so this is global uh global configuration and inside of it i'm just going to do this and so this is going to basically add an endpoint or, or a sync, which is configured to receive cloud events. And um, I, I also have a server running, which is just a simple HTTP server. And this particular one does not, uh, like it's not parsing cloud events data, but we are sending over cloud events data. And it's like able to look into headers. I also have a server, which is able to like look through cloud events data and then uh, sort of send back a response in that format, but it's not running right now. And the events, um, the last we talked, we were, we, you know, we talked about starting off with events which are more sort of used. So in terms of like a job, uh, we'd say like a job has started, a job is completed. And if the next step of the job, like the last, uh, what's it called, the, the artifact is built, so we can choose what events we want and maybe all of these events i'm just maybe going to do job start it and also add another endpoint all right um so i'm going to apply it back here and so and i have let me Are you guys able to see my um, VS code, or do you just see my um, my my browser? Just the browser at this point. Okay. And what about now? Still the browser. Okay. <laughs> I will share. Mm. Uh, so this is the server and um, so I, I also tried making sure that it works in a distributed system so my other agent um, it's offline I, I'll, see, I'll start it once like we display this simple with just one simple like executor uh, so let me, let me just like start a test on job and so this is what's being sent inside the cloud events data. Uh, and this is like how, how a cloud event is configured right now is it's using, um, it's using a binary format instead of a structured format. And what that basically means is that it's setting headers separately and then it's setting the body separately. So this is, um, you know, this is like setting up, setting up like we wanna send a, a JSON, um, object, which is like in, in, in a byte, like, like a byte array, which is um, being configured right here. So this is like the cloud event, which we want to send. Um, and going back to job listener or stage. So we're, so this is basically like an enum and uh, it has the, the three stages, which is like a job is started a job is completed or a job is finalized and depending on whatever the the current configuration of the job is it's just going to sort of put in information into the json document and then 
um, convert it and then put it inside of the cloud event um, data. And as I said, we are right now using a binary format, although I think we might want to move to using uh, like just using structured instead, instead of binary, because it's I, I was like reading and it just said that it's more, you know, if you want to multi route, it's 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 better to keep all the headers and the data together as the payload. So this is sort of the payload that we're going to get. And since this is configured for started, that's why it's getting all the started. I can also go in and add another um, sort of event and I want to get events, every job failed, job started, so all of the events basically. So that's um, that's Jenkins. I'll I'll move into um, the code and how it's configured. And it 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 uses um, it uses listener implementation. And in right now, um, you know, there's the abstraction that we were talking about. Uh, I I I don't think I was completely able to understand where exactly we might need that sort of um, that sort of implementation because, you know, since all of these are, like if this is, for example, a run listener, which is basically just notifying for run, and then there's item listener or job listener, um, you know, so what, so this is essentially like, we are going to need all of these listeners added as extensions and then have their, you know, the whatever methods that they have, we want them overridden or maybe not whatever our um, circumstance looks like. But when we talk about abstraction, the thing that I'm um, sort of thinking is, I, I don't feel that there's anything which is really common between these implementations. So we can like pull maybe some constant fields out, for example, job name or, and then put that into uh, like, like, like an interface instead of like an abstract class. And then just first figure out what's common, what sort of extra methods can we add. I was looking into the GitHub auto status job and um, there was the, like, do you want to send test reports or do you, or do you want to send error reports for other jobs? And I think that's a really good method that we can have implemented by other listeners. Um, and so, so yeah, so right now it's just using a job listener here um, and it's just extending the listener, which is the, the enumerations, which we were looking at earlier. And then there's a build model and job model, but just gets information, you know, URL, um, the, the, the current ID and stuff. Uh, and the cloud event uh, message writer is what's needed for cloud event and it's using one of um, the cloud event um, have a dependency to write any, uh, you know, like H in, write into HTTP and send it over as an HTTP request. And then this is the endpoint, which is some sort of some configuration that's needed for the jelly file and also some configuration that's needed to send. And I need to refactor this out, like the send to some better class or something. I don't think that this is the right uh, uh, place to put it. And um, the stage is the, the enumeration. It's what I have for now. It's great, Shruti. Um, that's that's really interesting. Jeff or Rohit, would you like to give feedback? Um, I mean, the, the only thing that I saw, we, we went through it briefly, was just stuff like like um, a hard-coded URL to HTTP host, which I, I assume is just kind of play, placeholder code. Um, in the, for, for the sync? Yeah. Or oh, is that, that was, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, 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 the URL for the sync, no, that's, I think that's a different place. That's just for um, like a cloud event to send the mess. So this is not the URL that it's getting out from the jelly file. The sync URL is coming from the jelly, which is then it's using to send the event to. Mm -hmm. Let me find where that. Uh... I think it was the last piece of code you were showing maybe. I think it was in the, in the end point. 
Georgie, is, is this up on your GitHub actually? Um, for us, but also for the other mentors, they might want to have a read over. So yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, um, it has a lot of like um, debuggers in right now, but I'm like cleaning the code and I'll put it into GitHub um, today, right? You know, right after the meeting is done and um, I clean up whatever is required, I'll put it on, on GitHub. Okay, That'd awesome, great. thank you. Is, is there, there's something that you can submit a, a pull request against or is this the, the initial mm -hmm. implementation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Because um, yeah. if you had a if you had a pull request, then it's easier to comment on specific things. I think. Yeah. To keep that review. Yeah. yeah. So we have he actually created a Cloudwinds plugin. Um, okay. Sort of with a few months back, so I'll just send a pull request to it. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I actually think I, okay, let me just go back and see what we were looking at over there. Um, well, um, we share. Uh, so, like looking into this like endpoint file, I like like right now I um real I'm realizing that I um, hard coded it there in the in endpoint um class which basically is configured for you know it has the sync URL and it has the event whichever that event is configured to be received. So if I go into the the jelly file, um. So, so all of these events and mm -hmm. um, whatever, you know, a, a user is going to choose um, is going to be represented here. And then if I were to go back into the enumerations, um, you know, this is the, the configuration needs to go here for sync URL. And this is the URL that uh, I'm sending it to. And I'm not using it here. I just. No, there, there's the one. Line, line 84 was the one that I yes, kind of, I, I was wondering should, about. But at the same yeah, but again, it's a, 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 if if I could look at the pull request, I could just make that comment. And it's probably a more efficient. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense, and I'm totally going to do that. It's just um, I don't. So I did a, an, another question since there's other people. I, I noticed for logging, you use system system dot out. I'm 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 yeah. not sure wh whether that will create like the same type of Java logs that you can you can look at in, yeah. in Jenkins, but I, I'm mm -hmm. I'm not super familiar with Java, so it, it might be fine. I I think you should shift to other logging libraries, a log or something like, like Logger. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you guys are you guys are correct about that. And um, yeah, I think I just used that used that there because I was like, I just need to print and see. But yes, that the, this is the thing that I need to um, log and make sure that it, it's into debug mode. Yeah. So whenever a person is debugging, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that would be the correct way. Yeah. 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 But but I mean, this this looks this looks great. It's a good start, and and I mean, the code is like easy to follow and and understandable. Um, just like this brief intro. So I'm 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 pretty pretty happy with your progress. Um, yeah. Right, thank you. yeah, amazing work. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, yes, l but... learning to write J Jenkins plugins is not trivial. <laughs> oh, especially Jelly. <laughs> jelly files are kind of hard to figure out how they work. <laughs> but, yeah. But yeah. I finally got it working. It was so fun. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, I did have a few questions actually. Uh, so the um, the thing about abstraction or just maybe just having interfaces that we were talking about earlier and looking into, um, so I was looking into how you'd implemented in um, GitHub auto status plugin. And, you know, since it has those where 
where those like listener implementations need to go to. I think that that, that was a very great place to use um, just abstraction for for common you know methods or just maybe variables. But do you think or I'm just I think that over here I don't know if abstraction is necessarily going to help, but I do feel if we are able to think of any situations or methods where we are absolutely going, which are going to be common between listener implementations, because like, for example, a run list, like a run listener has uh, an on started, on finished, whatever, and a queue listener is completely different. Uh, uh, an item listener is completely different. And all of them share different information. So I don't like there's not a lot of common information besides, you know, the name of the job, um, the description and stuff. So I like I want to hear your guys' idea on how or where can we leverage just maybe using interfaces and like putting common methods or um, just like if there are variables, which other listener classes that that can improve functionality and other listener classes can use. So, I mean, I, I think I, I kind of trust your, your instincts. It sounds like you, you've spent a lot of time thinking, thinking it through. Um, I, I, I think um, my, my guidance was just around, let, let, let's look for, um, you, you know, people write, write a new Jenkins plugin. They tend to, to go find something that's similar and, and copy it. And then, so they create a copy and then that, you know, it gets out of date with the, with the thing that they copied from, things have to be made in two, two places. And I, I just feel like this is the sort of thing that, that that's common. Like I, I could see other plugins maybe wanting to be able to send events. Um, so, so, so I don't have anything specific, but, but I just wanted to kind of uh, put it on your radar to be, to be thinking about those things because plugins can extend other plugins. So it's possible mm -hmm. that some plugin may want to uh, want to call something in, in your plug and it, it, and it, it might be that that it's not and but I, I just wanted you to be to be thinking about it I, I don't have anything specific but when when I start looking at the code if anything pops up we can we, I'll, I'll, um, I'll I'll bring it up and we, we can talk about it but yeah if you don't see anything common don't don't <laughs> go create abstractions um, just just because because of that that comment and I, I think like like properties are less interesting um, on on an interface. I, I mean, it's to me, it's kind of more about behaviors. And so, if the only thing you mm -hmm. see is like common properties, that to me that maybe seems a little bit less interesting. Mm -hmm. So, but but I mean, when you were talking about it, I, I just got the sense that you've spent a lot you spent a lot of time thinking about it, and and your conclusion made sense to me. Um. Yeah, I think I was just um, like still, you know, I have sort of figures on my notepad, just trying to understand um, where, you know, where's that commonality that we can yeah. do, create and leverage abstraction, because it is a really great idea to, you know, like have that implemented through an abstraction and have different listener implementations, like leverage that. And, um, but I don't know if I necessarily am able to understand it yet, but I'm still working on it and also on extending other plugins though it was something that I was trying uh, a bit earlier but again as I said you know if I this if I am to extend a plugin that would mean that I'm delegating the task of having that like that event payload and being yep. sent over to my or like to this cloud event plugin so so it's it's sort of tricky because you know for, if, if we consider a github auto status plugin for example it has those listener implementations and that's when it gets data, right? So if there's mm -hmm. a listener implementation for run listener and run listener on started, which mm -hmm. already sort of like a method that it's overriding. So as that, as the run has started and I'm like, I'm again, extending that plugin and as a run is started, I want the GitHub auto status plugin to send my plugin that um, event data and I will send it to the, the sync, but so do you like, do you kind of see the, it, it will, that contr that was a sort of different um, overridden uh, on started methods because your plugin has an on start, which needs to be implemented for to send me the event details. And then it's just a bit, it's just a bit tricky to 
get around because mm -hmm. also like, you know, whenever a job is started, I would want to run the on start for my plugin and then I'd want to run the auto start or like the on started for the um, auto status plugin to send the information over. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's, if that makes sense, I'm not, I'm not really sure if I'm making sense right now. Um, but but okay, I, what I'll do is sort of create a diagram of what I'm trying to say, <laughs> and then I'll send it over to you as well, so it makes a bit more sense. Um, but I just think that it 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 will overcomplicate this process because what if what we only need to do is you know get implementation as soon as the run is started or run is finalized and send it over. And which I think is it's happening right now. We just, you know, for job started, finished, and also we, we looked at finalized or completed. Yeah. So we can extend. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna say let, let's let's just uh, table that that discussion. I, I don't think you need to create a, a diagram. Um, I mean, what, what a good a good skill to have in, in engineering. I've learned over the years is knowing when to ignore advice from people. <laughs> And so, um, I, I hate to see you spending time on something. I, I mean, my, my comment was more, you know, spend some time thinking about this and, and, and you've done that. And, and I, I mean, I, I can see that you, you, you know, you're capable and you're smart and I, I, I trust you. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to be spending time um, worrying about convincing me. I, I'm, I'm good. No, I think it was, a, it was a good, it was like a good place for me to think because I was just like, yeah, that can also be a way we can do it, you know? Like if I just had it handed over to me, wouldn't have been as fun. I think, even if it were just like jelly files, as I was talking about earlier, it wouldn't have been fun if you know the jelly file was just like there. So it was kind yeah. of fun to figure it out. And I was also trying to extend like plugins in this particular plugin and seeing if or how does um particularly the ones with listener implementation because that's a sort of the thing that we want to do also you know the listener implementation on started they're basically like non-returning methods so those methods don't return anything and that's what we want to do is like as something is a started want to return something to another thing to you know get basically an event out of it so it's, it's yeah i think we might have to um go with a single listener implementation and then maybe like you know different listeners of course which um all which is also like sort of my an another question about listeners itself right now what what i had was a run listener and it, it it'll be simply uh i think very easily extended to an item listener and queue listener but uh Vibhav and kara and i we were talking last time about having like computer listener, which is if a node is online or an offline. Oh, also it does also work on scalable systems. So the node that I was talking about earlier, like that, the agent node, which was offline, I tested and made sure that it works on, you know, if there's like a distributed system. And um, so, so it was, it was working. Um, but in terms of sending events, like uh, this is, this job was completed by so-and-so agent or this job or like this agent is offline, so trigger this event. So, you know, that's also, um, do we do we want to also have events about computers or just executors and agents? Or do we just stay to the generic like jobs and um, queues and um, files and folders maybe? Change of jobs, I guess. Um, so um, whether I so, so so I mean the 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 short answer is that I I think that events about agents will, will be useful. And in fact, we we were having problems with some of our agents at one point, and I created a plugin just to 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 write the name of the agent just so we could track because we suspected that some of them weren't working. But so the the, the long answer is uh, does does it fit within within your project? And so that's that's what we have to decide. If you have time for it, I, I think it would be interesting. Does anybody else have any thoughts? No? So if I heard correctly, this the question was about uh, sending events regarding agents, like agent creation, agent. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
so uh yeah i think that's a good idea like uh, when a new agent is created or something but i don't know if that so are you uh thinking of creating that as a event that is created in the beginning as in like one of the first events that are uh, created by the plugin like for uh, the plugin wait i don't I'm not able to follow through. Like, what do you mean, the first? Event? I mean, um, so like, I I don't I don't think that would even be a problem, really. But uh, like, I was just thinking, what are the first kind of events like you're going to tackle on creating? Oh, 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 that makes sense. Like, first, as in, like the more important ones, or the first, first, as in. Like something that happens on priority in Jenkins itself. No, no. Like the first is in the first that you would start working on. Oh, oh, oh. But so the first that I sort of worked on, like I was, we were looking at earlier. I think you, you, um, you were not able to join at that moment. Was just like job. I can quite briefly share my screen again, so just so we know how like the UI and stuff looks like and how it's working. Um, um, yeah, sorry, I, I was in a little bit of a dilemma. That's why I joined a little bit. But hey, Jeff, it's nice to see have you here. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I missed the, the first couple. I, I slept through one of them. The other one, I, I just spaced. <laughs> but um, it, I, I, it, this will just become part of my, my routine every Monday morning. And I, I won't. I won't forget. Plus, I, I saw the reminder today. I'm just like very happy that all of us can come together and work on this stuff. I'm sorry for like a little being a little late today, but uh, hope I can also come on time and we can kind of sync on Monday. Okay. Are where 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 are you located, uh, Deepav? Are you in India or are you elsewhere? Oh uh, no, I'm in India. Okay, so it's evening, nighttime for you. Evening. Yep. Okay. Um, so this Vibhav is the, the, the global configuration for cloud events. And this was another thing that I was thinking. So you know how we were looking at um, like stati statistics gatherer plugin and how it had like syncs and then it had like syncs for jobs, syncs for QRL, syncs, or, I mean syncs for queue, syncs for build steps. But I think that having it this way makes it more modular because you know you just want to configure like a sync which receives only job started events. So the sync does not will not have to do a lot of configuration. It's also one of that it's making it loosely coupled and not like super attached on a single sync receiving all of these events. So when if we are to add more uh, events in terms of going on to other listeners like you and computer listener, I think the list will either just have to grow or maybe we can say something like this is a build, um, like over here we can say something like build endpoint and something like that and then particular ones can go on. Anyway, um, so, so this is... Can, can you select, do you just, can you just select one, one event at a time there or um, so I can add more, but here is just like one. Yeah, it, uh, can you uh, can you make this event into events and kind of like it could be an oh, array where multiple events. Oh, okay. So you can you can uh, you can basically configure multiple syncs, is it? Yeah, I, yeah. I basically can send it to uh, the end. So maybe instead of like. It's this endpoint doesn't work, <laughs> so it's probably gonna give me an error because this endpoint is not configured. But this the first one is, um, and then I can you know add some more to I don't know to go somewhere else. Uh, let's say Q, and no, no, it doesn't matter. I don't know what I'm spending time on this. <laughs> um, job completed, job file instead, and then if I were to save it, it'll be and if I like build it i'm going to probably get some errors on so oh, i i i did have a i did have a thought about this too i want to know what, what other people think again i mean 
I don't want to muddy the waters too much, but if there ends up being a, a lot of settings, um, you can actually create your own setting applet for the plugin. So rather than having it in Jenkins system, I, I wonder if at some point that would be useful. Um, what what would be that? What would that be again? There's a settings so, app. Yeah, you can have your own settings app, and and I mean like, like with with the auto, I didn't know this, but with, with the auto status plugin, right? So I just add it to the, the the config that has like lots and lots of settings, and it's just polluted. You can have like your own separate settings applet, and I, I don't think it, it has to be Jelly either. But, um, um, yes. yeah, I think you. I, I think uh, yeah. Um, the auto status one had Groovy files. That was very yeah. interesting. It's Groovy is not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably uh, we could use configuration as code. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Does it, what? It, what is it? Does it use JavaScript for its UI or? Uh, no, it's, like you have to pass YAML and. Oh. In the YAML. Yeah, like you just kind of say cloud events and then you say okay, what is the event sync and then probably the events you will be looking for so yeah, maybe something like that I, I i see that that's that's a good point but that, that's not necessarily ui related right that that's just um we we would want this plugin to support configuration as code yeah that that's that's a very very good point um, and any any modern new Jug Jenkins plugin should. Um, Libal, can you send in the chat what you were talking about? Uh, I can... One second. And also completely gave up the idea of using stapler because as I said last time, it's like, the, the binding that we like the binding with URL like object URL binding and I think that we are going to need that here. It's more yeah we 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 might need it for when we're configuring a sync since you know we'll need a URL to 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 be configured to receive cloud events and but not not for not for source. I've sent in the Slack chat. Oh okay. thank you. So, uh, one, so the prototype you've made, is it just like a jelly prototype or uh, does it work with the sink? It, it works with the sink. Oh, that's nice. It, uh, it, were you able to write, write some tests for it? Um, yeah, so I, I was thinking about, I have um, a separate, a clone sort of where I was like testing with some J units, but um, not a very um, adept one yet. But I think I will also get to that. I was just thinking about that a while, like if, before the meeting. I'll also I get realized, to- I just realized while asking that question that we are so early into this phase, like we haven't even started coding phase and we already reached a new prototype. Like this is, but this is like some good work though. Uh, like I was very impressed with the events. Just like one thing, I, I was thinking like every time you got to send a different event, like do I have to con uh, configure the same sync on three different uh, endpoints? Like if I want to wow. say send the same, like I want to send three different events to the same sync, at that point I would have to kind of select, no. like kind of create three of the endpoints. Like yeah. you're saying that you wanna sort of send like job finalized, job started, job completed to the same endpoint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, so there is like an all events option on there. So just it, it'll just send all so do you want me to share my screen again? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's with me, I will share this. I'm so sorry for coming in late and asking so many questions. No, though no, these are good. No, we need questions that makes the creative, I don't know, <laughs> juices flowing in the brain. Oh, anyway. Uh, I still have the most trouble just sharing my screen out of everything. <laughs> this is such a big trouble. Anyway, so manage one can. 
But I think, yeah, even if it's all events, it's it'll send all of these events. So I think it still would be nice to separate like job events from queue events and queue events from a build yeah. step events. Yeah, that, that would actually be nice. Like something like all job or all queue. Mm -hmm. What yeah. I was thinking was uh, we could have a, like, a, like a selector, like you could add events, like you are adding the configurations, right? So if you could do something like, instead of event, it will be like events, and you can say some, something like under that, so like a button which says add events and you know you could add events from there like actual events maybe this is uh, this, this would be, be like too much jelly work like there would be a repeatable for events so, I mean, so right now you have a re repeatable for the entire yeah. configuration over there. yeah uh, now i think there is a repeatable for the event like itself so yeah. event or no event not event for the endpoints so the endpoint is basically like a Java class and I have a repeatable for the Java class and event like the endpoint has the sync URL and the event where yeah. it needs like where a particular um wherever whatever event we want to be sent to the URL. So that's what I have right now. But you're suggesting like that add a repeatable for the event as well. Um, okay, so because then it will be easier to select for like one sync uh, if we want mm -hmm. like the kind of events to be seen. So I, I was just thinking in that sense. Yeah, I think the, the reason I kept it like this or like the reason, like I feel like this might be more, you know, modular in the sense that a particular sync is only receiving the particular event that it's configured for. And I think that's, if we, if you're looking at EDA, um, just patterns in general, you know, you, you, you'd think that, a, for example, if you're like looking at Terraform or just maybe something like infrastructure as code, and uh, you know, as a, uh, it receives an, a single event of a type, uh, node has failed. So that's one event. So it knows whenever it receives that event, it does not have to parse through a lot of information. It knows that this is the event that it's configured to receive, and then it will, you know, spin up another right, like agent or cluster or whatever it's configured to. And similarly, for um, if if they're like the cloud bridges in in like Azure or AWS or something like that, which are configured to receive one single type of an event. And whenever that goes into that particular event, or like whenever that sync receives that event, it knows what event it's receiving. And like with with the statistics gather plugin, I think it was like the UI was cool, but um, it was sending all of the events together, and for yeah. everything that's happening inside a queue gets sent to a. But I but again, it's it, it was for a different purpose. The purpose here is different than the purpose it was there. Uh, but I think yeah, we can we can also try how that might work in UI and also in, in like inside code. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think for now we we'll keep it this way, and yeah, it does make sense like uh, to have a, a endpoint which which might be configured to receive certain kind of events. Like in this case, you've given like job created or like job. Uh, job related events so if that endpoint is configured for that then it makes sense to kind of make it you know uh, mm -hmm. that it only receives those events and we kind of don't load it with different events mm -hmm. yeah but, but uh, i think we'll get to know in due time once the interoperability mm -hmm. stuff kind of goes ahead in the event sig and you know we start seeing what kind of uh, prototypes are being made. I think slowly we'll mm -hmm. have to start aligning based on those ideas, like how mm -hmm. how we can make this work with Tekton or something like that. And, mm -hmm. But that's like that's like way in the future. I feel like maybe three two three months ahead. But yeah, mm -hmm. this looks great. I think I think we are already. Uh, this this looks great. Like we we've already crossed like covered so much ground here. Mm -hmm. That's Do you nice. Plan on working in the coding phase. 
No, I also, Vibhav, I wanted to um, let you know a bit earlier that the coding phase actually started last week. Oh. So we are coding. It oh, was yeah. oh. seven. Well, I haven't, I haven't been, yeah. It just feels Ooh. like everything's moving too yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah, but this is, this is great. This is great. Uh, yeah, but thanks for letting me know. So, so, uh, so what is the next uh, thing you're planning for this? So the next, so the first thing is obviously uh, extending this, but that's not going to be super like troublesome or, uh, you know, something that's going to take a lot of time. But the next, next big thing I'm looking at is sync implementation. And I'm looking at extension points for um, like, webhook like um plugins and obviously start with there's the generic uh trigger plugin and all of, so all or most i would say are like extension points for actions since it gets tied to a url so i just have to understand that better to sort of um just make just see how the entire uh, infrastructure and the entire system is going to work when Jenkins is configured as a sync, especially because the events that we are receiving will not just be specific to a job, but they can also be specific to say a node or like, you know, um, because I think I was looking at that a node is also an like uh, model object, I think. So if we have I'm still not sure. I'm still like saying things out loud. There's a model object that we connect our action to, and that model object is our node, and we connect an action to it. So it's going to have a URL where events about that node can be sent, or not about that node, but like just events um, which might tie into that node. For example, some event has been received, and we want to scale up our nodes, and we want to delete or do something with our with our current system or agents and stuff. So that's sort of the thing to just understand the implementation of sync and how, how can we use extension points? If there are more extension points, I'd love to just understand and read through them and see uh, how we can do those. And also the tests, rating tests. I think you said a lot over there, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think, uh, but I feel like you got, you got a good idea. So at the end of the day, this is going to be run by you. So, um, and I hope you got the access to the repo. Yes, I do. And um, we were talking about it earlier and um, Jeff and Rohit mentioned that it, it'd be nice if I like if the code is on on GitHub so you guys can look and comment. So I'm just going to do some cleanup because, you know, my log right now, it's not like a debugger log, it's a system print and that's that's not good. I'm just going to change it to a logger or something like that and also um, just clean up some more places and then put it there so you guys can comment and just see what's going on. And I do have the access. So. Okay, that sounds good. Yes, no, thank you for creating the repository. That, it wasn't it wasn't a hard task, believe me. <laughs> um. No, but, but I still, you know, I was like, okay, if I got this exists because I think I would have I would have like, I should have, or like I would have wanted to ask for permission to host that repository. I'm not sure. Um, I think you would have, you would have gotten permission to host it. Uh, it's just that uh, before the project started, I thought it would be, you know, better to probably we. I even thought maybe we should have created uh, issues earlier, but uh, I think I think we are in a decent place. We could start uh, creating issues if you want, and then you know start working in that way. But I feel like you've already you're already so driven that probably you will be creating them then yourself. I guess. I will yeah send a PR by I probably in twenty four hours. I'm not gonna say like right tonight because we're in different time zones. Mm -hmm. So in twenty four hours it should be on there. So everyone. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Also, de- debugging by print statements is, is standard in many ways. Like everyone, everyone does it all the time. I put a, a link in the, in the chat. It's like a joke, but you know, I mean, it's everyone does this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kara, like, uh, I, so I haven't been vigilant about these uh, dates, turns out. So uh, I just want to let uh, know about the coding phases a little bit. Do, do we have time to talk about this stuff? Uh, uh, absolutely, we have time. I, I have time to stay on the call. Um, okay, cool. So the coding phase runs, um, as Shruti said, from June 7th. June 7th to July, um, to August 16th. So it's quite, it's a good, it's a good period of time. We're one weekend, Shruti is zooming ahead, being awesome. And um, this year has reduced hours actually. So we're, GSOC is requiring less hours from the students to take into account everything that is going on in the world and, and how turbulent this time is, um, which gives us a great deal of flexibility. That being said, we do have to meet certain benchmarks, but it, we're, we're way on track for that. So a student could not say, oh, I will do all my coding in the last four weeks and it will be fine. They do want a review process midway through um, just to ensure things are on track. But that, that is it. Within, within that structure, we have a great deal of flexibility on where we push and where we need some more time. For, for whatever reasons, be it schoolwork or something is happening in personal life or just something is happening. And it's really Shruti who can set that flexibility schedule. Um, yeah, and, uh, and again, like, you know, thank you so much for being understanding and appreciative and really, really <laughs> important. And also it's like so nice that I have such amazing team of mentors. So amazing. <laughs> um, and I, it's, um, I think it's like, unless you guys have like, want to change the meeting hours or um, like change, I don't know, the way we are meeting right now, I think it should be fine. This works for me. Um, currently, the new meeting time. Is, is what 1400 UTC it's, <laughs> so it's a little bit of a faff doing these these conversions but I think that's the way it's said and it's set on the calendar that way um but if anyone has an issue with that and I'll double check it with Mauricio because um I just want to make sure he can it, it's the one mentor we need feedback from and I want to make sure it works for him um but yeah we can be flexible on that but that that is where it's currently set now yeah, that works for me Cool. Was there a di- was there something that was just that was just about timing? But was there something else, Ruti? Are you is this is this flow working for you with the Slack channel and the weekly meeting, and now hopefully uh, more more reviews on GitHub? Yes, yes. It's no. I think it's perfect. Um, and like I feel like if we, when we move forward, I might want to maybe do two meetings a week when we are more into you know the the sync phase, I don't know how it's looking right now. Would that be okay with your guys' schedule? And I'm I'm fine with that. I will just yeah. say that Friday is another is it the bookends of the week have the less meetings for myself. Yeah. <laughs> um but but you know we can we can do another doodle and see what works for everyone. Thanks. That's that sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> And everything else is good. 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 You're doing amazing work. So I'm I'm so happy. I'm very pleased. <laughs> well, I don't have anything um, more to show or add right now. We'll talk more on GitHub and Slack. <laughs> If, if you have any doubts, like we are always around Slack. So if you end up starting the sync stuff, you can always uh, ask on Slack. We'll be there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you guys. That's so amazing. <laughs> That's so amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and, and and if you have a question for me, feel free to do add here or or ping me directly because then it'll um I'll, I'll get a notification. And I'll, I'll I'll see it more quickly. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Um, unless we have any more last minute advice or questions, then good. We can close the meeting pretty much on the hour. Thank you for showing your work, Shruti. That was really, really awesome work. Thank you. Okay, see you all next week. Hey.